Welcome back. So, in the previous lecture with respect to inorganic chemical industry, we have seen the basics of the sulphur and how sulphur is obtained and from sulphur we as a raw material how we can produce sulfuric acid. And uh, the sulfuric acid uh, we did not take up the plant in the last lecture. So, this current lecture we will see the reactions involved because I have already explained you the contact process and the lead chamber process. So, now we will uh, take up this contact process in detail which is the case of a modern sulfuric acid plant. So, we start with the sulfur dioxide conversion reactor and sulfuric acid production process. So, what we will cover is uh, an essential part now we have obtained like elemental sulfur sulfur needs to be burned in a sulfur burner. What is this sulfur burner? Because you need to produce sulfur dioxide. So, if the production of sulfur dioxide will depend upon how efficiently you burn or how efficiently the air especially the oxygen gets in contact with the elemental sulfur. That we will see then the sulfur dioxide conversion reactor. Now, this is another important uh, part which we will discuss which is how the sulfur dioxide is converted to sulfur trioxide because we have seen that sulfur trioxide when in contact with water gives us strengths of sulfuric acid, the required strength of sulfuric acid. So, we saw the inherent disadvantage of lead chamber process because of the lower concentration, but in the case of this modern acidic plant it goes by a double contact process. The double contact process can produce oleum that is 100 percent sulfuric acid or we more than 100 we call percentage of sulfur trioxide in 100 percent sulfuric acid. So, then we will also briefly discuss what are the problems associated with the catalytic reactor. So, why we require a effective cooling and a multiple catalytic bed. So, we know we when we write our equation we know we require a catalyst, but uh, then uh, is it that simple? So, shall we use a catalyst and get it the desired products? No, it is not like that because you have to also see two aspects thermodynamics and the kinetics. Thermodynamic it may be feasible, but the kinetic is not feasible or the other way around. So, somehow we have to alter the operating condition in such a manner we get the conversion close to 99.7 or 8 because as I told you this sulphur dioxide needs to be combusted or it needs to be converted quantitatively because the legislation does not permit to have sulphur dioxide because of the environmental regulation more than something I, I discussed this in the previous class as around close to 2 kg per ton of sulfuric acid produced. So, we should not be having more than 2 kg. So, this 2 kg quantitatively roughly corresponds to 99.7 percent of the conversion. So, that is why this the intermediate removal of sulfur trioxide is necessary. It is something like that you have a uh, reaction. So, you take out the product so that the forward reaction goes. So, that way we increase the conversion. Then we will describe the flow process of the entire modern sulfuric acid production process which consists of a burner, then you have a mixer, then you have a reactor, then you have a double contact process like that we will see. And then also we will see the possible reasons where this catalyst, we know the catalyst is vanadium pentoxide needs to be replaced. So, the first uh, you can say the block the first block or the initial reaction for the sulfuric acid production is sulfur burner. What is this sulfur burner? This has been taken from this image. What it does is, so this part on the left hand side is a sulfur burner. What it happens is we have a liquid sulfur and we have air which is sprayed and we have some combustion air also coming together. So, they are uh, you know these are actually uh, they are sprayed means so that the reaction takes place with a larger surface area and it is uniformly mixed. The sulphur and the oxygen which is from the air is uniformly mixed. So, the dried air, so we are talking of whenever we are talking of air, we have to make sure that it is dried air. So, the dried air and the atomized molten sulphur. The sulphur is sprayed in the form of atomized. They are introduced together at one end of the sulphur burner. A high degree of atomization and their good mixing ensures efficient combustion. Now, one thing is uh, sure we for liquid sulphur viscosity is very high if the temperature is more than 410 Kelvin. So, you need to maintain the temperature at near about 410 Kelvin. So, you need uh, if it, it goes down. 
so temperature goes down so it will be solid solid you cannot spray so you, in order to maintain it in a liquid state you need heated pipeline so the heated pipelines are usually used in industries to carry this liquid sulfur so what are the reactions happening in this uh, left hand side these are the reactions happening so the sulfur when it is sprayed obviously because of the boiling point is 445 but when you want to transport it you need to keep it down so it converts from solid to gas so both are in gas state so the gas state solid reacts with oxygen in air to form sulfur dioxide and some heat now the issue is other than sulfur dioxide you will have oxygen nitrogen also from the air so you will have a mixture of sulfur dioxide oxygen nitrogen so whenever we are writing any reaction concerning this sulfur sulfur dioxide sulfur trioxide it means you have air in it so the air in it means you will have invariably a mixture of these three compounds so what is the heat uh, the amount very exothermic is around minus 300 megajoules per kg mole of liquid sulfur so you re release a lot of heat so this lot of heat if you see so this 410 to 425 as i told you yeah just coming back to the way the sulfur is handled the molten sulfur requires keeping temperature between these temperatures where the viscosity is the lowest now this heat what do you do do you throw it away do you throw this heat away no you don't throw this heat away so what you see is say here water is entering this is a heat exchanger so you take out the heat and this steam whether it is low pressure high pressure or medium pressure steam this i have taught you in the first lecture for the introduction so these steams are then used in various you know requirement within the plant steam you require in various examples for example you know no form steam cracking you, you require steam some other examples so you want to steam heating so for that this steam is generated okay so co2 is coming out here and then it releases and goes to the reactor so this is the first part this is a sulfur burner okay now this is sulfur dioxide conversion reactor now what is this the reactor if you see there are four beds of the catalyst each bed has vanadium pentoxide this is the first bed second bed third bed fourth bed okay so now why these four beds why not a single bed i'll tell you later so these are adiabatic fixed bed reactor so what happens there are two types of catalyst see platinum is very good but it is highly expensive conversion is more in the case of platinum but it is expensive and it is sensitive to arsenic poisoning because this arsenic is some present in pyrite so pyrite which is the ore for sulfur has some arsenic so if this arsenic is present they will immediately deactivate the catalyst or poison the catalyst but it has high activity so but we need to do something which is economically also viable so that's why this was not taken further by industry so we went for vanadium oxide vanadium pentoxide it is cheaper it is good stability to poisoning effect it can be used with porous inorganic support so when i talk about this first bed second third or fourth bed it does not mean the vanadium is only vanadium pentoxide no it is always on top or it is coated onto an inorganic support such as silica or alumina so this is on silica or alumina okay so they are can be used with this porous inorganic support I mean these silica and amina also are resistance to high temperature so these are the one which is used the catalyst the so2 conversion reactor is used in the intermediate process for conversion of sulfur dioxide to so you know what is the reaction so2 plus half o2 will give so3 this is sulfur trioxide gas okay so let us see what is this reaction how it goes about now it's a highly exothermic reaction so if you see both the molecules or the both the gases are in gas phase so now you have the sulfur trioxide so you see it's highly exothermic so it means as the conversion proceeds your temperature will increase so because the temperature will increase it will limit the conversion of sulfur dioxide so what happens even it limits the conversion of sulfur dioxide the two problems are associated with it first problem is then you will release more sulfur dioxide in the air then there is a environmental legislation so you cannot limit environmental legislation comes into the picture so you don't you have to also take care of these legislation because these are set by government for the safety of what is the should be in the atmosphere 
So now, uh, because if you keep only one single bed, it is seen that the conversion is hardly 60 percent. So, if you use one bed instead of four beds, once through only 60 percent. So, it means that you will release a huge amount of kgs of sulfur dioxide in the atmosphere, which is not at all permitted. So, what is the way? Yeah, the second advantage, this is the first advantage, environmental legislation and to take care. Second way, the catalyst may lose their activity. So, at high temperature, this porous support may break. So, vanadium may leach, it may go out with the exhaust gases. So, that is not desirable. So, they may lose their activity. What is the solution? Solution is, we have to use reactor with multiple catalytic bed. So, in the previous slide, I showed four beds. So, it means in each bed, after the reaction is complete, take out the gases, you cool down the gases, you cool down the gases. So, if you cool down the gases, so it is entering the second bed at a lower temperature. When the temperature is lower, then this reaction, forward reaction will proceed. So, interstage cooling is very much necessary because the interstage cooling of this catalytic bed helps us to control temperature. So, now we can then use stage wise utilization of vanadium catalyst. So, at every bed, you have the conversion where the temperature increases, then again decreases. It increases and then again decreases. Again increases, then decreases. Finally, you get an effluent of sulfur trioxide. But still, can we reach? Can we reach that magic number of 99.7 percent of conversion of SO2? If we are able to reach, then it's fine. Otherwise, if it is even though little below, it will be more than 2 kg of sulfur dioxide emission per ton of acid produced. Okay. So, we have to look at these magic numbers. So, how do we do that? So, one is the cooling, another way. But before we see, before we try to find out the solution, whether we are able to get the desired composition or not, let us see what is the effect of the intermediate cooling and the multiple catalytic bed in terms of conversion. So, in the y axis, I have given the SO2 conversion that is we are seeing the forward reaction. So, in the forward reaction, the gases which are present are sulfur dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen. As I told you, this oxygen and nitrogen, these are coming from air. Okay. So, these are coming from air means it will be present along with sulfur dioxide. Now, this is the equilibrium curve. What is this equilibrium curve? So, the equilibrium curve, if I want to write down the expression, so, you have the expression in the previous slide also, I am just repeating it here. So, by thermodynamics, so by thermodynamics, maximum conversion you can get is this line. So, if you would go at higher and higher temperature, the conversion drops, the conversion drops. Okay. So, it means that there is no point in increasing the temperature, you need to be somewhere here in this region, because at this region 700 Kelvin to be precise, the conversion is most. So, it means thermodynamics limits the conversion. Moreover, as you go ahead, there is another aspect which we call this is kinetic. The kinetics means the rate of the reaction also decreases. So, to take up these two aspects, what you do? As I told you in the previous lecture, we take first the four beds, the first bed, second bed, third bed, fourth bed. So, initially the feed with sulfur dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen enters the first bed, conversion happens, the exhaust comes here, again the, the energy is cooled down, then it comes down here, then it is comes down here, it cooled out, further cooled and then finally what you get? I suppose that not all are converted, even it is 99.7 percent around sulfur trioxide along with little bit of sulfur dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen is given. So, these gases will be then taken to the contact process where it will be in contact with liquid water. So, now what is the catalytic bed temperature? If I want to draw this, how does it look like? So, see in the bed 1, if you see, uh, I have written a conversion from the temperature you see the bed 1. So, if you see this, if I want to write A here, this is bed 1, B, C and D, 4 beds. So, bed is, so this first bed will come here. So, the conversion starts 
at 700 Kelvin, so 710 Kelvin to be precise. So the temperature will rise, so temperature rises, so it will go like this, let us say it goes to 14 here about. So if you see this temperature is close to 865, okay. Now then uh, what you do, you cool it down, so if you cool it down, the conversion will not so this is your first bed or bed 1 I will write down, bed 1. So conversion is up to 40 percent and temperature rises from 710 to 865 which is here. I will say it is almost 60 percent because it is close to 60 percent, maybe I draw it again to make it more, uh, you know, to make it. So I will say it, it goes to near about here, 60 percent. Okay, near about 65 percent. It may be here and there because I cannot draw it exactly on this uh, plot. Then it slows down and again it takes to 710 Kelvin. Let us say this 710 Kelvin it goes here. So the conversion goes here. So it is cooled down. So it is cooled. Then it goes to the second bed. The second bed again it goes to 770 and the conversion goes to 87 percent. So we are almost there. I mean, if I want to write it down, it goes this direction this is bed 2, okay. then again it is cooled and if it is cooled it goes back to again this temperature, so I write a straight line. Okay. Then bed 3 if you see it again goes to 705 Kelvin, so it goes to 770, it goes till 705 Kelvin, so we are here somewhere, but the conversion is close to 95, so it goes to 95 here, so this you have written bed bed 3 which is the C part. Now you are remaining with the remaining uh, you know this part where you need to cool it down further to get 95 percent you have already achieved to get here because the temperature range is very less. So this line will be very less it will be somewhere here, here. So this is bed 4. So here we are the final. So now you see we cannot go beyond this equilibrium curve. So what is that conversion? It is 98.5, still we are low with 99.7, which is low, we are at more clo close to 1.2 percent low. So I hope you understand this, what I have written here is in a single catalytic bed only 6 to 70 percent can be achieved. So this is the case, so if you suppose you do not have bed 2, bed 3, bed 4, you will get the conversion till 60 here. That is what it says. So it is true, major part of the conversion is obtained in the first step. Successive cooling between the beds ensures up to 99 percent, even though I have written 99 percent, it is not 99, 98.5 percent. So what, the, what is the way out, out of this? So what is the way out? One way out is you take some feed, when I talk of feed, I talk of the product the product sulphur trioxide you take out some product from the third bed. So when you take out the some product from the third bed, the thermodynamics changes. This equilibrium line then shifts upward. So if you take out the product, the forward reaction is dominating. Forward reaction dominating means this equilibrium line will shift little bit up. So if that shifts a little bit up, then this line can go up and reach this magic figure, okay, 99.7 percent. This is exactly what the modern sulfuric acid plant do, does, okay. So cooling is one part, taking out the product is another approach. So there are two approaches, they work in tandem with each other. So let us see. Now this is what I said. So mm, now what you do is in the third bed, as I told you you take out the product. So if you take out the product, there will be more conversion of this. So if I write, want to write out that, again that expression. So you take out this product, SO3, take out some part of it. So it means you are then trying to force the forward reaction, okay. So when you force the forward reaction, it means the equilibrium curve after SO3 absorption, SO3 absorption why have I written? It means sulphur trioxide is taken out from the third bed and made in contact with the liquid water, so it is taken out. So this equilibrium line if you see it has gone to this 
direction, the upper part. So, if I want to draw what will be the effect, so it will be 720, if I want the 730, it starts at first bed 730 close to 94 percent, it goes like this, it goes to 94 percent, this is your third bed. Then it cools down to 740 to 730, so it will not go much here. Then it goes to 700, sorry, it will go, so it has, it has gone to 740, then it is cooled to 700, so it will go still here. Then what it will do is that it will go up because from 700 it goes to 99.7, now you, you have the magic figure. So, it goes up here, here, it goes to 715 Kelvin, so it now here it just extends beyond this line, so it goes here. So, this is what you call 99.7 percent. So, equilibrium curve after sulphur trioxide absorption, okay. So, this is third bed, this is the final bed or the fourth bed. I hope you understand. So, now this the intermediate removal of sulphur trioxide after the third catalyst bed from the gas stream enables the conversion of SO2 beyond the thermodynamic limit. So, this is before removal, this is after removal, okay. So, the intermediate absorption of sulphur trioxide can provide overall conversion of more than 99 percent. Now, we are fine with the emission norms, okay. So, I hope this is clear because if this is clear, then you will be able to understand the flow sheet properly. Let us go to the flow sheet now. Now, in the modern sulfuric acid flow sheet, you have three main sections. The sulfur burner, sulfur burner I have already explained, it is the combustion of elemental sulfur to sulfur dioxide which you do it in a sulfur burner which I explained three, four slides back. Then you have the catalytic reactor just now I explained which performs the catalytic oxidation of sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide. Then the absorption tower, absorption tower nothing but sulfur trioxide when it absorbs or when it comes in contact with liquid water, it becomes sulfur, sulfuric acid with the desired strength. Now in modern sulfuric acid production process, two absorption tower is used, so it is called double absorption process or double contact process. There are other useful sections also, one is the demister because sulfur dioxide is always put in water. You should not put water on sulfuric acid, okay. Sulfuric acid should always be put in water, otherwise there will be an explosion. Other way you cannot do. But even if you put the sulfuric acid in water, sulfuric acid means not sulfuric acid, I am sorry, sulfur trioxide in water. Sulfur trioxide in water, there are, you know, this mist, sulfuric acid mist. Immediately as they come in contact with the water, mist is formed. This mist is very dangerous. So, to reduce the mist formation, what they do, they use is demisters. Demisters are beds of small diameter glass or Teflon fibers which actually capture the sulfuric acid mist. Otherwise, if there is too much mist, then may be corrosion within the absorption tower. Then their economizer. Now, if you see all the reactions are exothermic in nature. So, it means that uh, we have to, uh, you know, there may be some cold stream, there may be some hot stream. So, you take out the heat from the hot stream and put it to heat the cold stream or maybe when you put the air in the first sulphur burner, you may be need, uh, require a heated air, you want to heat the preheat the air. So, you can take the heat from the exothermic reaction of the reactor, that is exactly, exactly what the economizer does, it produces high pressure steam. So, now let us go and see what is the modern sulfuric acid plant. So, this is the modern sulfuric acid plant. So, now uh, see this is air, this is air, dried air, okay. So, when I, um, this is something, uh, some adsorbent. So, when air is passed through this, this more or less it is dried and then uh, any particle if it, it comes from this adsorbent, it is able to absorb here and the air and the molten sulphur, when I, when I am writing here red it means that these are heated lines. So, this heated lines means you want to keep it in the liquid state, but here you just atomize it and spray it in the sulphur burner. The sulphur burner I have already explained. So, these are some baffles to provide good mixing. So, the air and sulphur dioxide mixes here, sulphur and oxygen will mix here, 
and it forms sulfur dioxide plus nitrogen plus oxygen. So, these are their effluent products. Now, when it does so, it is exothermic reaction. If it is exothermic reaction, so it means here you are taking out the heat. So, when I draw these type of symbols, it means we are taking out the heat. So, it, I have not written which is a high pressure steam, low pressure steam or medium pressure steam. However, this steam can be utilized in many other application. Now, this effluent gases are sent to the reactor. So, as I told you the reactor, you have this bed, uh, first bed. So, if I want to write down, this is the first bed, second, third, fourth. Now, as I told you in the first bed only 60 percent is converted, then the remaining 39 percent I will say 39.7 percent are all converted in the second, third and fourth phase. Okay. Now, you see lot of streams are coming and entering. What does that mean? So, it means whatever the effluents are getting converted while coming from this catalyst bed, the streams are cooled by the generation of high pressure steam. It is cooled because as I told you, I think uh, the entry temperature is around uh, 700 Kelvin while the it is around close to 860 Kelvin. So, then again this 860 Kelvin, this is cooled and it goes up to around I think if I remember correctly 710 Kelvin. So, this amount of heat is captured by the high pressure steam. Then again it enters and again gets it is it's converted. Now, the second bed the effluent stream you do the same thing you do cool it down but the heat is not used to generate steam the heat is used to preheat the unconverted sulfur dioxide which is coming from the first absorption tower first absorption tower so it is used to preheat the sulfur dioxide unconverted sulfur dioxide coming from the first absorption tower and then entering the fourth catalyst bed. So, anyway it is losing heat. So, if you see it just loses heat to that particular stream and again enters the third bed. So, after the third bed when the reaction is completed you need again cooling. Now, instead of this cooling what you do? you in the third bed if you recollect what I said you bring out the product. So, the product SO3, SO3 plus I would say some part of sulfur dioxide will also be there because there is no complete conversion. So, I am putting an asterisk marks here. So, with this asterisk marks means this SO3 plus a small amount of SO2 will be there small amount because it is not totally converted it around 90 if I remember collecting around 94 percent oh, 94 percent conversion in the third bed. What they do they will take out this sulfur trioxide product gas along with sulfur dioxide again release the heat cool it down give it to the exhaust gases which are coming these are primarily sulfur dioxide unconverted sulfur dioxide which is coming from the top of the first absorption tower then this particular fourth the effluent gases which are coming the sulfur trioxide gases enters into this first absorption column where water is already present. So, this is the first contact process. So, when it gets contact before that the economizer are pro present because you need, it, need to reduce the heat content of this sulfur trioxide is a highly exothermic reaction even though you are giving some heat to the stream of the unconverted stream still there is some lot of him available because this is only heating right you are not taking out the steam this is the taking out of the steam economizer means you are taking the excess steam then you are entering it into the first absorption tower. So, here water and sulfuric acid is present so SO3 plus H2O so you present you get H2SO4 here in the liquid phase okay SO3 gas H2O liquid. So, this what is the reaction happening. Now, not sulfur trioxide is totally absorbed. So, what is remaining is sulfur dioxide. So, this sulfur dioxide as I told you earlier it gets preheated from the third and the second stream. Okay. So, it gets preheated and from the third and the second stream and it enters the fourth bed. 
So, whatever remaining this will help us to go beyond the thermodynamic equilibrium. So, you are taking out the sulphur trioxide here. Now, while it does so, then it goes the conversion, the conversion here then becomes 99.7 percent. Okay. Again, this is an exothermic reaction because this reaction uh, happens here also. So, these are the reaction SO2 plus half O2 will give SO3. So, these are all gas phase reactions. This again economizer is required because these are heated lines. So, the economizer again takes away the steam, cools it down. Now, instead of the first absorption column, this is sent to the second absorption column where exactly, where exactly same liquid water is maintained and second absorption tower because 99.7 percent is converted. The stack is primarily SOx gases. This is close to around 2 kg per ton of sulfuric acid. Okay. So, now we are okay with the environmental legislation. The remaining unconverted gases mainly SO2 passes to the stack second absorption. The remaining is coming down. So, this is sulfuric acid of desired strength H2SO4. So, you mix water uh, then uh, you prepare desired strength. You can uh, uh, control the addition of water. Now, the remaining again uh, for better conversion or better contact you take a part of this dilute solution into back to the second absorption tower to give intermediate mixture, good intimate mixing between gas and liquid phase. Now, the remaining you can store it here. Now, uh, what it is uh, you also pass this, I have not made this. So, whatever product which is coming here air as well as this first absorption cover you can convert and send it. So, you have the liquid acid coming here and entering into this storage tank and you have another storage tank. There are two storage tank basically. So, this is just to you, know, you to uh, prepare some known composition or a known composition of sulfuric acid 60 percent, 70 percent, 80 percent or oleum. So, what it does you add again you can add water to modify the contents. The liquid part, the liquid this may have some oxygen also in it. So, for example, if the sulfur oxide is, is left, so the air which has some oxygen, the drying tower air is sent and it is made to react if there is some, you know, if there is some sulfur dioxide present in this liquid stream, it will also convert or whatever take care of that and then it is sent here. Then uh, what you do is uh, you do a good check, you again send it here, some part is send it here it is treated with air so as to reduce all the sulfur dioxide to sulfur trioxide. That's so, it is actually the drying tower. Okay. So, you dry, you should not be any gases left. Again, you send back here. So, this process goes on. So, amount of desired strength of acid is taken to this drying tower and some amount of desired strength of acid is again taken to the first absorption tower for intimate mixing. So, you see there is a, a stream here which is uh, taken back to the first absorption tower and there is another stream here which is taken to the second absorption tower. Just It is just to enhance the mass transfer process. The gas liquid uh, resistance should be less for, of the, for so as to this reaction goes to a completion. Then what you have is final product is again remove the heat, you have the sulfuric acid storage tank which is around 99 to 99 percent weight percent of acid. So, this is the entire modern sulfuric acid plant which the industry has or operate. So, now what is the problem, the last part, the catalyst deactivation. How does the catalyst lose the activity? There are two common reasons for the deactivation of anadive catalyst. One thing is I have written here the first bed, the catalyst activity is because most of the effluent enters the first bed. So, they will be uh, they will be under harsher conditions as compared to second, third and fourth bed. So, the life is up to 5 years, second bed up to again 5 years because it is close to first bed, third bed is more 10 to the 15 years, fourth bed is also. So, these are typical lifetime of vanadium catalyst. Why do they deactivate? See the deactivate reason is first plugging of catalyst bed from the dust of vanadium catalyst due to its physical breakdown. The catalyst may break because of the intense heat the porous support may break. 
so therefore regular screening of the bed is required especially the first bed the first bed requires regular screening by the industry so you need to stop down or shut down the operation and do a screening of the bed and see if all the vanadium particles are intact then there may be chemical changes in the catalytic behavior due to the flow of molten vanadium from the catalyst some vanadium oxide they even though they not break they may leach out with the product and it is particularly very uh, dominant when with temperature as the temperature rises some of the molten vanadium oxide may leach out from the first or second bed so this is not good so these are the two basically reasons the plugging of catalyst bed and chemical changes in the catalytic behavior which is why we require the replacement of this catalyst because of economic car concerns also this is not expensive so these are the time lines the time scale where you need to do a replacement so this is what we have discussed for the sulfuric acid i will stop here so you should go to the flow sheet all the flow sheets are taken up from this textbook check up molin and this is one good uh, website link where you can see the image of the sulfur burner and uh, this is a chapter sulfuric acid manufacture from elsevier you can go through this you will find some modern catalyst and other processes so i'll thank you and we will again meet in the next lecture mm -hmm.